let's start off with the first tutorial. Welcome to the, today's lecture on vessel construction. I'm Werner von Korm. Whether you want to put a satellite in orbit, make a transcontinental flight, or step onto the very surface of the moon, uh, you're going to need to build yourself a ship. It should be pretty easy even if you are not a famous si rocket scientist like myself. In this tutorial, I will first show you around the Kerbal Space Center, then take you to the Vessel Assembly Building, where you'll learn how to construct a simple ship. We'll cover adding and removing parts, what the parts do, how to change the performance settings of the parts which have that option, and how to control state. At the end of the tutorial, you will have a craft fit for a quick hop from the launch pad. At each step, I will lock out all controls other than the ones you need for that step. If you still manage to mess up, you can press the back button to go back and fix things. We are now at the Kerbal Space Center. I'll give you a quick rundown on how to get around. The PSC, for short, is home to the pinnacle of Kerbal Endeavor and achievements for space exploration. Using the facilities you can see here, you will be able to manage your space pro program, create rockets and planes, track your Kerbal explorers as they roam uh, the solar system find exciting new uses for explosive substances and in case of emergency hire more turbos. To find out about each of the facilities you can hover your mouse over them or the facility button. Um, uh, the facility button. If you need to repair a structure you can do this by right clicking them. Okay. Uh, take some time to hover the mouse over the buildings and see if they each uh, what they each are. And when you're ready, enter the, the vehicle assembly building. Tracking station, research development, not complex, administration building, space plane hangar, mission control, launch pad, and this one is the vehicle assembly building. So, let's go in. Very good. What you see in the middle of this screen is the construction area. This is where parts are placed and your craft is constructed. On the left side of the screen is the parts toolbox. The parts toolbox. It will show all the parts you have available in each of the different categories once there are uh, any to fix. That is uh, next. If you want your craft to be controllable, you need a command module, and it's best to make it the first play part you place. This part will either contain some lucky Kerbal crew or an automated pilot mechanism. As we are just starting, there is only one choice. Go ahead and pick that command module from the pod tab. For at least one part is placed, you can look around with the following control. like your pilot to be able to make more than one flight, he or she will have to return safely to the ground or water on Kerbin. Parachutes are a simple way to make sure that happens. Uh, they can be found on the utility tab. When you are choosing parts, you can view the details of available parts by hovering over them in the toolbox. When the info is viable, uh, visible, most parts have an additional information window which can be opened with uh, right click. Note that the parachute states the effective diameter, diameter in each state and what the maximum safe speed for deployment is. Go ahead and select uh, MK16 parachute by left clicking on it, then move it to the top 
of the command pod so that the green sphere at the bottom of the parachute lines up with the green spheres at the top of the pod. Click again to attach. Some parts, like our parachute here, have configurable objects. To see these, we need to right-click on the parachute we just attached to the pod. Do that now, and you will see the available, available parameters. On the parachute, you will uh, see that we can adjust our altitude and the atmospheric pressure at which to open. That setting can be quite useful at distant, on distant uh, world. For now, let's check that the opening height on the chute is at least 1000 meters because safety is the uh, curbal way after all for the minimum pressure slider move it a bit to the right to 0.2 the setting prevents the chute from activating until the atmospheric pressure is above the figure uh, configure, configure it value on curbal is a 0. Two is about nine kilometers in altitude the evening. If you stage early and arm the parachute, it will wait until then to activate. You can hide these options by right-clicking on the background screen or picking up another part. When you're happy with that, uh, we can proceed. Right-click this one, zero point. Next up, we are going to need something to make us go. Click on the ancient tab on the left to show the av available ancient and solid rocket points. Grab one and connect it to the bottom of the pod. We may, you may need to, sh uh, to zoom or move the camera to be a able to do so. Okay. God, you're just starting out. We're not a famous rocket scientist. You're not a famous rocket scientist, and to make that craft survivable uh, as it stands now, you you have to be better at rocket science than me. Uh, impossible. The problem with that craft is that this solid rocket is too powerful for the payload. A single small pod, and to, it will either burn up on ascent from going too fast or burn up going back down. Even if you survive that, the craft's mass will cause it to fall too, m too fast for the uh, chute to uh, operate properly and you hit the surface before it could stop you. Okay, I promise I teach you how to change that to make it work in a later tutorial, but for now let's continue. Well, at least this way I get to tell you about removal control parts. Pick the thumper and either drop it back of the par uh, parts toolbox or press the lead. So this one. This one, okay. Next. Instead, let's add the solid motor that's a, be a better match for a ship of this size. Okay. Good. Good. Nice one. You built the simplest survival craft possible. We could go launch this right now, but it might be safer to explain one other thing first. In the bottom right, you will see the staging stack is the box with the number zero and icon for the parachute and the engine in it. This stack shows us which part will be activated as we stage our rocket. Uh, what this shows is that when we activate the next stage, both engine and the chute will be triggered. While it would be considered funny to open the chute and fire the motor at the same time, it's not going to give you much of a flight. To fix this, we need to separate the engine and the chute into two stages. If you mouse over the zero stage, you will see the little plus and minus appear on the left of the box. Click the plus button to add a new stage. If you add too many, click the minus button on the stage on the extra ones to remove them. Make sure you have precisely two stages. Next. 
Excellent. It's important to note that the stages activate from the highest number and then count down. So your first stage will be stage 1, the engine, and our second stage will be stage 0, the shoot. Now drag the engine icon from stage 0 down to stage 1 to give our pilot some comfort. This one here. Next. That's it. We have, uh, we have a safe, well, rel relatively safe craft that's ready to go. Let's make sure that we, that if we need this design again, we don't have to build it all from scratch. At the top right corner, top of the screen, you will see the name of our craft inside of our ears.